Welcome to No Man's Sky, everybody. This is Elon Paul. There's been a lot of discussion about, especially from newer players, regarding Sentinels. They want to know a little bit more about them. So I've decided to make this video. Ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about Sentinels. So, as we know, Sentinels are those little floating robot guys that like to get in our hair and cause all kinds of trouble and problems for us. So let's talk a little bit more about what they are in terms of who we are in relation to them. Now we could go into the storyline, we can discuss everything regarding our latest expedition, but you know what? What we're going to be doing is talking about Sentinels free and clear. So let's get started and talk about our Sentinel friends here. I'm Alon Paul, and we're going to discuss Sentinels today. Now, I found a nice system, and we're going to show that system to you here, that has every planet I need in order to make this easy for us to discuss these things. We have, as you can see here, a planet that has high Sentinel activity. It's a cable planet. It's kind of different. We have another planet over here that's a paradise planet. It doesn't mention anything about Sentinels, but there's Sentinels there. Here's a human planet. Same thing. Doesn't discuss Sentinels. We have a dissonance detected planet, which obviously has sentinels on it. We have another high sentinel activity planet. And finally, an aggressive sentinel planet. So let's talk a little bit more about each one of these planets, shall we? First things first, your paradise planet over here, as well as that humid planet we were talking about, have no mention of sentinels, but sentinels are present. When you first start a game, it may take some time, but the sentinels do show up a little bit later, but they only start showing any interest when you mine things, as we're going to show you in a little bit. So one thing you want to do is try to avoid shooting the sentinels, and you don't have to worry about mining around them. It's only when you harvest certain materials that they really get angry at you and cause problems. So just leave them alone, and they'll usually leave you alone. Now let's go on to this planet. We have a cable planet, and we have this other planet that both say high sentinel activity. The high sentinel activity means that they'll be present quite often and more easily aggravated at the things you might do. Again, as long as you're not bugging them, they won't bug you. Just stay out of their way. Finally, we have the aggressive sentinel planet. You only have to be within eyesight of them. As long as they can see you, they're going to call on their buddies and start attacking. So it doesn't make a difference what you harvest on those planets and what you do. They're going to attack you. Finally, we have the Dissonance Detected Planet. This means that we have all kinds of corrupted Sentinels on that planet, and they're going to cause us more problems than anything else, but they're a little different from the High Sentinel Activity Planet in the sense that they won't leave, they'll leave you alone as long as you leave them alone, but not as bad as aggressive Sentinels because they won't attack on sight. So let's go ahead and get started and be on our merry little way. We're going to go and visit each planet and see what we can find. So this little guy right here is something that you're probably familiar with. It was a storm at the time when we found this guy, but as you can see, he's just a very simple sentinel. He's got a very strong scanner so that he can pick up on you and a couple of laser turrets on the very front, but nothing else. But he does have the ability, as you can see by the little antenna thing on the bottom, to call in his buddies. Now, this planet happens to be an aggressive planet, so I kind of got to make tracks as soon as I <laughs> recorded this. So that's all there is to this little guy. He can be easily taken out and he drops a pod for you, but I'm going to go ahead and leave him alone as quickly as possible and get out of his way. Let's go on to the next planet and we're going to see one of these planets that have these little sentinels on it. So this guy up here is one of the main sentinels you're going to find on a various different places, especially protected buildings. They have shielding all the way around in the form of metal plating. They have those two bars on the front of them. As you can see by the shielding, little antennas in the back and in the front, three eyes, two turrets in the front as well for lasers. And when you aggravate them, the shields drop in front of them. They are usually associated with a smaller sentinel, this little guy right here. These little guys are the healing sentinels. They heal other sentinels that are being damaged by you. They come with a one little laser underneath 
but their main ability is that they fly over and start healing on site as quickly as possible any sentinels that you've damaged. So if you're not putting out enough damage out, uh, not enough damage output in destroying these sentinels, they get repaired rather quickly. So I'm going to show you in just a second as I attack a couple sentinels uh, what exactly happens when you start a fight with them. But we got to make sure we have enough ammunition. So we're going to go over to my exosuit here, scroll down a little bit, add a little bit more. As you're thinking to yourself, you got almost 10,000. Yeah, you go through it pretty quick with certain weapons. Now with the weapon that I'm using, which as you can see is the pulse spitter, and if the damage output that I can put out, I can take these guys out rather quickly. These combat supplies you pick up offer two things for you. They give you nanites, they sometimes give you ammunition, and they also give you health. Now they call in these guys, and you can, as you can see they have two turrets on either side and one main one on the bottom. They come in pairs real quickly, and they come with a healing unit as well. They can also put up a shield to protect themselves. They duck behind in order to make sure that you can't shoot them. So the two turrets on either side shoot lasers, but the bottom one actually will shoot a mortar, or as we like to say, a little throwing grenade there. So as you can see, this guy was shooting at me here. So pretty neat. And they, as again, they come with the healing units as well. And the healing units try to heal them up before you have a chance to do anything. So you can see I've been damaged. I pick that up and I'm immediately undamaged now. So it heals me up just a little bit. I get projectile ammunition. I also get glass out of it too. And that glass is something that can turn into special items. Uh, sometimes more nanites, sometimes shielding, sometimes weapons upgrades. So it's good to have it. But we've run across a new unit as it gets it further into the fight. Now I stopped it here, but I decided to stop it a little bit further along. There we go. These triangular units are call-in units. They do have two little turrets on the front of them, and they do shoot at you a little bit. But their main purpose is to call in support. So as you kill off sentinels, it calls in more of them for you. Great if you're trying to acquire nanites, but if you don't really want to want to fight to extend too much, yeah, you better take them out pretty quick. Now, I'm going to watch as this guy gets healed. As you can see, the healing unit comes in, heals them up, and look how fast they heal. So, yeah, you want to take out the healing units a little bit quicker. We're going to go to the next stage here. In this next stage, they pull in a newer sentinel that you may or may not have seen before. This sentinel is on four legs. I didn't get a good shot of it, so I'm going to let him go ahead and get himself set up while we talk more about him. And he has two attack abilities. So we're going to freeze here and take a closer look. The four-legged creature we call the quad. The quad attacks with, again, two different ways of attack. One is this laser, and if you stay still, he'll just sit there and keep that laser on you the whole time until you die. But if you move out of the way, he'll move out of the way, but then he does that. He tries to charge you. And by charging and running into, sometimes you can take moderate damage, sometimes you take major damage. Now, you might have saw him there just for a second disappear. All the Sentinels with the last update have now been able to cloak themselves. Well, certain ones can. The Quad can definitely cloak himself. So he disappears from view for a few moments, but you know, honestly, if you know where he was, you're pretty much sure that you are gonna be able to find him again. So as we collect our supplies here, we're calling in our next round of reinforcements, as it says, arriving in three, two, one, and they'll always appear in the direction that your camera is facing, see? So that's a little bit of a tidbit of information you may or may not have known. They will appear usually in the direction you're facing, so that you can take them out. Now in this next stage, we got a new sentinel that's dropping. You might have saw him drop in the distance there. I wanted to take out the support guys real quick. And he is known as the mech. You have your own mech, of course. But these mechs have multiple abilities. They have the mortars that they shoot from a distance like that that do significant damage. And they also do damage to the terrain and put holes in them. The second weapon is the Gatlin laser that he's shooting at you. Again, you have just fell in a hole, but he has that Gatlin laser to do damage. But as you get closer, he switches over to the flamethrower, something that you can't really get unless you, well, it's not important. You can't get that. But if you have to, again, with the right weapon, you can take him out pretty quick. In the last stage, I'm going to have to show it to you in two different segments. So in this segment coming up, as we're waiting for the reinforcements to arrive, three, two, one, and then zero, 
you see it gave you a small picture of what to expect. I'm going to take these guys out as quickly as possible first. It usually comes associated with either a quad or another mech. There we go. And there's your two-legged walker. Now, as you might be uh, might have associated with, if any of you are Star Wars fans, the first thing you think of is it's an ATST, almost like a chicken walker, if you will. So I'm going to freeze it right here with his first weapon. This first weapon is just a full-on laser, kind of like the quad does. But these guys are kind of tough. They do have shielding on their legs, as you can see, metal plates. There's one on the top and the thighs, and two on the shins. So taking out each leg does some significant damage to them, and it causes them to pause. So as I take this out, watch what happens. See, I took out one. Nothing really happens, but if I take out one on the same leg... Uh, oh, by the way, you can also get out of the way if you wish. So if you don't feel like fighting them, if you have a structure nearby, you can just duck inside real quick to get some healing done. And if you wait just a couple moments, sometimes your shield can he he uh, heal up. But you'll see that they just wander around a little bit and then start shooting again as soon as you become present. But when I took out that second plate on the leg, you see how it causes them to pause as they try to heal themselves. Now this one was a little bit uh, defective, so I had to go to another planet. So as we go to this planet, we're going to introduce you to what's called the Sentinel Pillar. The Sentinel Pillar is a main hub that Sentinels are controlled from, is basically the whole purpose behind them. This hub I had visited before, so the accoutrements around it were already destroyed. But as you can see, they do have protection units around it. I've got a Sentinel to my right and a mech unit on the left. They will always usually have Sentinels, and if they have anything beyond Sentinels, it'll always be a mech instead. Nice little guy there. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you something here. See, this guy's not attacking me or doing anything. So if I, but if I harvest materials, the Sentinel drones will start investigating. So anytime I harvest something, they will attack. Watch what happens. Shields up. See? And then he starts attacking. But I'm forgetting that there's also a second guy. So I'm going to switch over to my weapon here. All right, we've taken that one out. And then the mech, as you can see, he's already lobbing things at you. They also have the ability to jump jet, as you can see, into a new position. So, not going to bore you with the details on this one. So, as I'm taking these guys out real quick, we're going to fade out in just a moment here, and we're going to switch over to the next stage. Now, again, there was three pillars over here. We won't fade out just yet. We're going to show you the main control panel here. These control panels allow you, and while you're here, you can't be damaged. While you're in there accessing the computer, you can't be damaged. But you can shut down the Sentinel forces, and you have access to any tools that might be in there. Also, it has an access logs, which is a whole different mini storyline for every single one of these you find. Usually a good idea to go ahead and complete those out. You get a nice title from it. So here is the two-legged walker one more time, and I'm going to show you what happens when you take him out. So you tick up both legs. We pick up the combat supplies real quick. And this is going to activate their second level of attack from these two-legged walkers. Now, because I haven't done any damage to the head, his laser will still be active, so he'll just turn back on and start shooting lasers at me. But if I do some damage to the head and I actually take out some of the metal plating up there, as you'll see here in just a moment, he gets angry and throws a fit. And now he it, he shows you his second one, which is heat-seeking laser bullets. I don't know what else to call them, but they will track you if you don't move out of the way. So those are the two levels of attack that these units have. And they do significant damage, so don't stand there. Take out the head, and the last thing that you get is the walker brain that's up there. You can get two brains out of this walker if you go all the way up to the top and you see the Sentinel network just got disabled. You can use your button to take it out and then use your guns to take it out a second time. You get two brains out of it. The Sentinel network will be shut down for about two hours. Or if you happen to re reload an autosave, the Sentinels will automatically be reactivated. Very important to keep that in mind. 
Now, as you can see, we're floating over to our corrupted planet, where the corrupted sentinels are, dissident planet. So we're going to talk about the different dissident units that are on this planet, the corrupted sentinels. Again, they won't attack you. Sometimes they just look at you out of curiosity. So as we fade out and fade back in again, what we're going to do is we're going to show you the first creature. A little bit of a graphic issue here, so I apologize. And we're going to zoom in on the first of these two types of units. The one to the right here is just a floating unit like all of the other usual sentinels you've run across. But this sentinel has two crystallized pillars on top of its head, kind of making it look, if you will, devilish. These have multiple attack abilities and healing abilities. I want to be very clear about that. They shoot lasers, they shoot flames, they can heal each other, and they heal each other much faster than their smaller counterparts on the regular systems. Be very careful with these units. They attack ferociously, and they attack solidly. They will take you down, they can take you down real quick. If you're in a normal mode even, and you haven't had any experience with these, and you don't have a decent weapon, leave them alone. Try to avoid battle with these at any cost, because they will take you down and kill you. So as you can see, it has antennas sticking out the back too, which allows it to call in reinforcements at the same time. So if, if you want to, they're really kind of a multi functional unit. Again, lasers, flames, and they have the ability to heal each other while calling in other units to help them out. So that is the main unit there. Our second unit that we're going to be getting to in just a moment is going to be, another name for it would be like a spider walker. So we'll be getting to that one in just a second here. As we finish panning around this unit, you can take a look at it from all sides. It is one of the newer units to the Corrupted Sentinel Planets. Our next unit is, we all call a spider walker by the way it looks at first glance. It's got the bulbous body and almost like the front face of a spider in the way it's uh, positioned. Again, it has the crystallized pieces up on top, but it only has four legs, which don't make it quite a spider. And at the same time, because of the pincers, the way that the legs have points on them, it doesn't quite make it a quad either. So it is the equivalent of several units at the same time. They also charge like the quad does, but they also have multiple abilities. Lasers, mortars, flames, and the ability to cloak itself when it's getting damaged. We have this unit here, which is the Dissidence Resonator. And what it does is it actually looks like it's a big drill that bores into the ground, corrupting the planet that it's on. It has no attack ability and does not attack you. But by attacking these units, you can get two things out of it. Either a mirror that you can use to uh, get other items, or an echolocator to discover campgrounds that you can get multi-tools from and discover new ships. So we're going to pull back from this at this point and get to work. So the first thing I'm going to do is make sure yet once again, I've got enough ammunition. Yeah, I got a little extra on that one. And we're going to attack this particular resonator. We got an echolocator out of that one. Now this planet unfortunately has creatures on it that will attack me, so I have to take them out too. So here's the first unit. You see he's cloaking himself, shooting flames at me. Tried to charge me again. Let's drop down just a second here. Here come the mortars, as you can see. And another charge. They do shoot lasers, though you didn't see it that time. They call in these other little units, which are swarmers. They're tiny versions of their larger counterpart that you saw. And they basically have the same kind of abilities, but they're much quicker. And in swarms of four, they will attack mercilessly, all four of them at the same time. So let's see what happens as I try to, to defend myself against these. There's one that just tried to charge, and as I'm taking him out, they're shooting me with lasers. See, little purple lasers. The second thing that they attack with is that. 
As you damage them, if you're close enough by, they will explode. See? They damage me and everything else around me. And while that's happening, this guy's attacking and trying to hear me. That guy's charging me and trying to shoot me. And this guy's trying to charge me and try to shoot me. It is orchestrated chaos at its finest. So we're going to show you the next stage into this. As you can see, they're all showing up with their plum, And I want to show you what these larger guys do. So as I'm taking this one down and it cloaks, you can see that it's being healed at a very fast rate by the unit above it. So again, orchestrated chaos. Here we are healing all the little units down below. But by using a paralysis mortar, I can make them pause long enough for me to take them all out. So having a paralysis mortar in your inventory is a good idea. Now at the end of the battle, it will do this. It'll look for a dissonant spike, which is basically going to be a sentinel ship that you can acquire. Does that shut them down and cancel them like the other planets? Nope. If there's any still floating around, you're going to have to take them out too. And they'll still be around no matter what. Now we're going to also show you the next element of Sentinels is the Sentinel Starship Interceptors. I got a really good pause here from when they popped in. I don't want to show them to you. Right? It's a little bit of camera angry to try to get this done. I apologize. Camera very angry. But I happened to get this one at an excellent angle as it was passing me by. As you can see, they are the interceptors in the variety that I like to call the raptors with the outswept wings. Uh, as we adjust the camera here to get a better view of it, this is the sentinel attackers that attack you in space. These sentinel attackers will attack mercilessly. And as we show you the battles to come, you're going to see some very interesting techniques that they have and abilities that they have. So while me, the weapons I'm using right here are the regular ordinary sentinel weapons, I'm going to switch over to my more powerful weapon and take them out. There we go. So I decided to take it away from the planet and bring you in here. And I'll show you a little bit of a trick feature here. So as they start to attack, I've got this guy nearly destroyed. And the amount of time it took me to turn around, his shields are already back to healing. Full, full power. So you have to take them out quickly. The first several stages arrive in ones and twos. But on the fifth stage, as you can see here, you get the next version. Ladies and gentlemen, the Dreadnought. Otherwise known as the Sentinel Capital Ship, we all have named it the Dreadnought. As you can see, it's launching multiple fighters. I paused here for just a moment. The coloring of this is absolutely fantastic to begin with, so it was a good stop pause here. And you can see there's literally two ships coming at me there, while two others have just been launched and are coming at me as well. So we're going to get a little bit closer, and you can see my, <laughs> my shields are dropping rather quickly. There are, as we pause here, a front laser on the front left bottom corner there. That's a rotating turret. They've got five more lasers along the main sh main uh, side of the Dreadnought that can attack you. There's a few of the, the one at the front. Five main ones along the sides that will shoot and try to focus on you, just like the walker was trying to do on the planet. And then there's one more a little bit further down in the back. Five, six, seven laser turrets that are all taking shots at you. And you can see my shields are dropping rather quickly. And this one's got really good shields on it. So I decided to take a couple of the ships out. So we're going to take this out all the way to its ultimate end. So I'm going to recharge my shields. You can use sodium. You can even use radiant charge on these ships as a little side note. And I'm going to take out a few of these Sentinel ships real quick. Two, three, and there's the third one, actually. Three, and there's the fourth one. So we've taken out four ships, right? Very, take a close look at that Dreadnought as he's pushing ships out of the side of the ship right now. We've got four more Sentinels have been launched, so you know what? It's time to take out a Dreadnought. 
So we're going to focus our beams down the side and take out as many of the lasers as we can. There's still one over to the top. There's still one in the front and in the back. We've got them taken care of. So we have no more weapons to fire at us from the Dreadnought itself. Now we could go after the little ships, and you can see it says at the bottom right that the ship hull integrity is down to 33% on them. But you know what? With this weapon, we're going to take out the Dreadnought itself. And I stopped a couple times, and I always like taking pictures of it, so... But here's what happens. And we're going to back off just a little bit. And there it is. Sentinel forces retreating. Nice explosion scenes. Great time to always pull out your camera and take a couple good shots with your with your ship in the forefront. Capital ship defeated, Sentinel forces retreating, and you get a rare item, a Dreadnought AI fragment, which allows you to find your own Sentinel ship as well. So there's a secondary way of getting so. You also get to salvage glass from a lot of these ships as, as well. So, something to keep an eye out for, because they give you good nanites and good stuff from them. So, let's take a look at where it's leading us and we're going to show you what you can get as a reward. Now at this point in our broadcast, we are pretty much done with all the different types of sentinels that you will encounter. So as we come across this ship here, and I'll show you how it gets acquired, I'm going to mention that all the sentinels that you're going to face, it's just a matter of having the best weapons you can get in order to be able to fight them off. They have gotten difficulty, uh, difficulty, they've gotten more difficult over the years. So I hope you've enjoyed this whole video here in regards to the Sentinels, the Sentinel ships, and all the different ones you're going to come across. So if you look at this ship here on the ground, you can see that it's a pretty decent ship. I'm being attacked again. <laughs> you can go to the Autophage. And sometimes you get good stuff out of it. Like in this case, I got a walk I got 10 walker brains out of it. That's very handy. It used to be that you could go up to the ship at that point after you just pull them out without going any further and you could get the ship. But now you have to I have to repair it. But you do have to remove the units from this area here, including this high line brain. And you'll need to get three radiant shards, an inverted mirror, and a harmonic brain in order to reset this. I happen to have one in my inventory, so. In order to get your brain from Highline to Harmonic, you have to get in your ship and go to a location. So what you do is you click on it, and it should probe and look for a ship for you. Uh, pardon me, look for a area that you can reset that. And you, all you have to do is follow it. Now I happen to have a, high, a har Harmonic brain, so I can get this ship if I wish to. It happens to be a B class. It's got two nice supercharged slots on it and a whole lot of cargo areas. You know, nothing is damaged. Nothing's damaged. So it's a really good ship to get your hands on if you can early game. They also have great hyperdrive range right out of the box. So usually a good idea to get them as you can. You can also use an echo locator like I'm doing right now to find yourself something called a, well, what we have termed a camp, an abandoned campsite. So as we take off and we go to this, this campsite as we approach it, you can't find these with just regular scanners. You have to keep an eye on the ground to find them or use an echolocator to find them. If you look closely at this campsite, it's got some parts laying around, tarps covering things. It's got a little something called wheelbarrows floating around that have harmonic scrap in them. This scrap is usually very handy to pick up as it gives you certain items. Sometimes it's useless stuff like rusted metal, and of course, the inevitable residual goop. This one over here is gonna give us, yes, more rusted metal. But you do get some good items once in a while. Like this one over here is gonna give us an exosuit expansion unit. But I think we've just gone back to viscous fluids again. And I think that gun just gave us more rusted metal. And finally, a suspicious packet which if we open our menu, we can go ahead and open that and we get a certain item out of it, which is kind of nice. This campsite looks kind of like a crashed space, not a spaceship, but one of our space stations. It does have an autophage in it and you can feed it lost circuits to get some of your storyline going on this. And it all usually tells you is that, something to that effect. And that's it. But it does look like a crashed 
space center so this unit here though if you open it up has a harmonic lockdown in progress and allows us to put in memory glyphs so you do the short little mathematical formulas here then you I don't know why I paused so long on this I want to be very clear I think I was very puzzled at the mathematical formulas and I wanted to describe them to you but each one allows you to do the math formulas you come up with the three numbers and those three numbers are related to glyphs and in those glyphs you will find and you can put them in any order there's three spots as long as you select the three right glyphs it doesn't make a difference again which order you put them in it will allow you to unlock certain items like for instance we can deactivate the multi-tool seal and we'll take a look at that real quick and this allows you to get a brand new multi-tool now these multi-tools are damaged but sometimes they're pretty decent multi-tools like this one's an a-class and happens to have a supercharged slot on it which means there's probably two other slots someplace else when you can acquire it and you get it for free you will have to repair it with certain things from the planet that you're on crystallized hearts atlantidium and usually inverted mirrors so that's what you do in order to fix that crystallized heart as i'm showing you excellent so the last thing you can do with that computer is locate a dissonance spike. What that dissonance spike does is it allows you to find another ship. And it will lead you to a very short jump to a, another abandoned ship. But we're not going to get into that right now since we've already shown you that. So as we pull our ship in here, and take off in my own Sentinel ship, which again, I call a Raptor class. We want to, I just want to mention how much we appreciate what Hello Games has done. It, it really is a beautiful scenario that we have. Uh, all the scenery on every planet we go to is absolutely wonderful. And as we take off into the cosmos, we can enjoy exploring every single planet out there, which would take us more than our lifetime could possibly have. But with millions of us players playing this game, it really has become quite wonderful to be able to do so. So as we approach our capital ship, and I hope you've enjoyed this video, this capital ship is something that you can acquire on your own at any particular time. These ships and many others are available to us, as well as the frigates that go with them that we can acquire in our travels. So again, we want to thank you all for watching. If you have any questions or comments you'd like to make about this video, please feel free to do so in the comments section. I usually respond to any questions, and if you did just have a very nice comment, I'll always respond in kind. And if you haven't already, please hit that like button. And if you haven't subscribed, well, there's more videos to come, and I've got a couple hundred videos already out there. So feel free to peruse the libraries of my videos, and feel free to subscribe if you wish. Again, I want to thank you all for watching. This is Alan Paul, signing off. Thank you. Please like and subscribe. Take care, everybody, and see you in the next video.